Hello and welcome once again to Anesthesia Tools. This edition we will be discussing pressure regulators in anesthesia machine why, what and where. Pressure regulators are used in anesthesia machines for three reasons. One, the pressure delivered from a cylinder is far too high to be used with safety in apparatus where a sudden surge of pressure might accidentally be delivered to the patient. If the pressure were not reduced, a fine and accurate control of gas flow would be difficult to achieve. There would also be a danger of pressure building up and damaging other components of the apparatus. As the contents of a cylinder are exhausted, the pressure within the cylinder falls. If there were no regulating mechanism to maintain a constant reduced pressure continual adjustment would have to be made of the flow control valve in order to maintain a given flow rate. What is a pressure regulator? Pressure regulators or pressure reducing valves reduce high and variable pressure from the cylinder to a more constant lower pressure suitable for use in the anesthesia machine. Where is the pressure regulator located? The pressure regulator is part of the high pressure system located downstream to the cylinder pressure regulators. Now let us see the working principle of a pressure regulator. The gas from the cylinder passes through a filter and the inlet into the high pressure chamber. The gas then passes through the valve into the low pressure chamber. The increased pressure in the low pressure chamber tends to distend the diaphragm, the force of which is opposed by the tension in the spring S. When there is sufficient increase in pressure, the diaphragm moves and the valve closes. The pressure at which the valve closes can be preset by adjusting the screw and altering the tension in the spring. Let us see the graphical illustration of the working principle of pressure regulator. Here the gas from the cylinder flows into the inlet. In this diagram the outlet is closed. Now the gas flows across the valve into the low pressure chamber. As the diaphragm is pushed by the gas in the low pressure chamber, the valve seat moves up closing the valve. Once the flow meter is open and the gas flows out from the low pressure outlet, the whole system assumes a new equilibrium. We know that force is equal to pressure multiplied by area. Here the forces trying to close the valve seat are P1, the cylinder pressure acting on A1, the valve seat area. P2 the regulator pressure acting on A2 the area of the diaphragm. Both these forces are counteracted by S the tension in the main spring. Thus in equilibrium S equals P1 multiplied by A1 plus P2 multiplied by A2. Did you note that if S remains constant as P1 falls, P2 the regulated pressure should rise so that the cylinder empties, the regulated pressure increases. In fact, as P1 falls, the valve V will have to open further to permit the same flow rate. The spring expands and therefore its compression is reduced and in the same way the tension in the diaphragm is reduced. Therefore. As the cylinder pressure falls, there is a small reduction in S which partially reverses the effect illustrated here. So far we have discussed an indirect acting pressure regulator. Older anesthesia machines were equipped with Adams valve, a direct acting pressure regulator. Here is the internal structure of Adams valve. You can find the reversal linkage or lazy tongs arrangement which causes the valve seat to be opened due to downward force applied by the tensioning spring. 
when the cylinder valve is opened the gas enters the chamber below the diaphragm forcing the diaphragm to rise you can see the valve seat opening gas entering the low pressure chamber and pushing the diaphragm up its attachment to the reversal linkage causes a downward movement of the valve seat closing the valve and interrupting the flow of gas from the cylinder if gas is permitted to exit the chamber via the outlet nozzle the slight fall in pressure reduces the upward force on the diaphragm permitting the valve seating to rise and thereby allowing more gas to enter the chamber from the cylinder the outlet pressure is maintained more or less constant at a level that is set by adjusting the tension in the tensioning spring since its action is to tend to lower the diaphragm and open the valve seat now at equilibrium the forces pushing the lacy tongs to open the valve area are p1 a1 and tension in the spring s the balancing force pulling the lacy tongs away and closing the valve seat will be p2 into a2 that is the regulated pressure acting on the diaphragm this is the equation p1 multiplied by a1 plus s equals p2 into a2 thus the outlet pressure is maintained more or less constant at a level that is set by adjusting the tension in the tensioning spring which is significantly high compared to the value of p1 multiplied by a1 which varies as the cylinder gets used up there were some major issues with uh, adams valve the nitrous oxide loses heat on expansion this chills the adams valve which would become jammed in open condition by frozen water vapor that tended to contaminate medical gases consequently some adams regulators bore external fins to absorb heat from the surroundings and reducing the risk of this occurrence adams valves sometimes develop a fault that causes continual jumping of the flow meter bobbin due to the lacy tongs sticking as a result of wear and tear but it may also be caused by small particles of grit or metal in the lacy tongs or the valve seating to summarize here's the comparison between indirect and direct acting pressure regulators now what is special about nitrous oxide pressure regulator and why it is called a slave regulator from the external features we can see that oxygen pressure regulator has two chambers and the one for nitrous oxide has three chambers you can trace the inlet at the bottom of nitrous oxide regulator to the oxygen pressure regulator output this is a simplified internal structure you can identify the valve spring fin and diaphragm here nitrous oxide flows in from the cylinder and no output to nitrous oxide flow meter while oxygen supply is absent now what happens when the oxygen line is pressurized as the diaphragm is pushed by oxygen pressure the valve is opened and the nitrous oxide output is seen again when oxygen pressure falls below 20 psi the valve closes and no more output of nitrous oxide happens so nitrous oxide regulator was made to act like a slave regulator to oxygen as the master regulator safety blow off valves are often fitted on the downstream side of the regulators to allow the escape of gas if by accident the regulators fail and allow a high output pressure 
with a regulator designed to give a pressure of 60 psi the relief valve may be set at 70 psi these valves may be spring loaded or may operate by rupture here we come to the end of this episode where we discussed pressure regulators in anesthesia machine why what and where thank you for listening until we meet next time with a good topic it's me Sanir signing off thank you